A large study seems to show extra benefits to statins for people living with HIV. I spoke to Professor Stephen Grinspoon to find out more. A lot of people with HIV might just think, well, of course statins will work for us too. So why did you need to do this study? It's a great question. Um, statins do have a long successful track record, but most of the time they've been used in populations which are much older or have higher traditional risk scores. The unique thing about this study is that we use statins among people with HIV who are relatively young with a normal cholesterol with a very low to moderate predicted risk score. So this is a population of participants who would not ordinarily be prescribed a statin. So we are extending the benefit of statins to a new population, a younger population, and we show that they were very efficacious in this with the patients, despite being low to moderate risk in the age. The effect seems to be even stronger than has been seen in the general population. So what, what's going on there? Yes, we think we're doing two things at once. In the effect we're seeing, then 35% reduction in major adverse cardiovascular events, heart attacks, strokes, and cardiovascular death. We think that we're, we're affecting that in two ways. One, we're lowering LDL levels. So even though I mentioned that LDL levels were generally normal at the beginning, it's always lower than 50. But in addition, we're lowering residual immune activation. And we know that patients living with HIV, despite being on antiretroviral therapy, Sure, they don't have as many HIV-related comorbidities, but they are having increased heart attack rates and strokes, which we hypothesize to be related to that residual immune activation that's persisting, that inflammation. So we think this is a two-for-one therapy, if you will. One, it lowers LDL, and two, it reduces that uh, residual immune activation. And the evidence for that, I think, is that when you look at our study, if you look at the amount we lowered LDL, we saw an effect size on heart attacks and strokes, which is about twice what you'd predict from the lowering of LDL alone. So this is not to say that lowering LDL is not important. It is, and it's contributing, but there's something else on top of it, and you think it's that lowering of residual immune activation and inflammation. Some people are quite skeptical about statins. So what can you say that might convince people living with HIV that there's something they should consider? What I would say is that we showed that it worked, and it worked very robustly, among the po population of people living with HIV, and even those with low to moderate risk. And that's important because we no longer have to extrapolate from other studies. We actually have data in this group of people. And whenever you consider a drug, you have to weigh the risks and the benefits. And here we're showing that it's pretty well tolerated as well. So there's a, a slight increased risk of muscle pain, and stuff, but it's pretty low prevalence, 1% difference. So I think people living with HIV will consider that this, when you consider the risk-benefit equation here, that it's weighing in favor of a benefit to this population. And I would say that, you know, this is always an individualized decision between patients and their physicians, and we're not saying it's perfect for everyone, but I think the data would suggest that it's worth considering, even if you're at low to moderate risk, people who would not ordinarily be prescribed or recommended a standard.